He is known for being a German physician, playwright, poet, and philosopher. He is recognized for his productive and complicated friendship with Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, where they discussed aesthetics and collaborated on works. He is Friedrich Schiller. In the late 18th century, a remarkable friendship blossomed between two influential figures in German literature and philosophy. Johann Christoph Friedrich von Schiller, a renowned physician, playwright, poet, and philosopher, found a kindred spirit in the already famous Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. During the last 17 years of his life, Schiller and Goethe forged a productive, albeit complex, friendship that would leave a lasting impact on the cultural landscape. Their bond went beyond casual conversations, they delved deep into discussions about aesthetics, exploring the nuances of art and its profound effects on human experience. Schiller, known for his insightful perspectives, played a pivotal role in encouraging Goethe to transform his unfinished sketches into completed works of art. Together, they embarked on a journey of intellectual growth, fueling each other's creativity and challenging one another's philosophical visions. Their collaboration extended beyond private conversations, as they joined forces to create a collection of short satirical poems called Xenian. Through these poems, Schiller and Goethe fearlessly confronted critics and opponents, defending their shared philosophical vision and pushing the boundaries of artistic expression. Their partnership and vibrant discussions laid the foundation for what would later be known as Weimar Classicism, a period that would profoundly shape German literature and philosophy for generations to come. Friedrich Schiller, known as Fritz to those close to him, was brought up in a devout Protestant family in Marbach, Württemberg. His father, Johann Caspar Schiller, was a military doctor, and his mother, Elisabetha Dorothea Schiller, instilled in him a strong religious upbringing. As a young boy, Schiller immersed himself in the study of the Bible, which would later shape his writing for the theater. Despite his religious upbringing, Schiller's father found his work as a recruiting officer dissatisfying, and the family frequently moved around. In Lorch, Schiller received his primary education, though the quality of the lessons was lacking. However, it was during this time that his parents aspired for him to become a priest, and he received instruction in Latin and Greek from the village priest, Father Moser. Schiller was captivated by the idea of becoming a cleric and would often playfully dress in black robes and pretend to preach. In 1766, the family relocated to Ludwigsburg due to financial difficulties. It was there that Schiller caught the attention of Karl Eugen, Duke of Württemberg. In 1773, Schiller entered the Karlsschule Stuttgart, where he eventually studied medicine. Despite his academic pursuits, Schiller suffered from frequent illnesses throughout his life, which he attempted to cure on his own. During his time at the Karlsschule, Schiller delved into the works of Rousseau and Goethe, engaging in discussions on classical ideals with his classmates. It was during this period that he wrote his first play, The Robbers. The play, which depicted the conflict between two aristocratic brothers, garnered immense attention and shocked audiences with its critique of social corruption and its advocacy for revolutionary republican ideals. Schiller's play propelled him into the spotlight and led to his honorary membership in the French Republic. In 1780, Schiller obtained a post as a regimental doctor in Stuttgart, a position he despised. Seeking to attend the first performance of The Robbers in Mannheim, Schiller left his regiment without permission, resulting in his arrest and a 14-day imprisonment. Karl Eugen, displeased with Schiller's actions, forbade him from publishing any further works. Faced with financial difficulties and entangled in an affair with a married woman named Charlotte von Kalb, Schiller made the decision to flee Stuttgart in 1782. He embarked on a journey that took him through Frankfurt, Mannheim, Leipzig, and Dresden before settling in Weimar. In Weimar, Schiller sought help from family and friends to extricate himself from his dire circumstances. In 1787, Schiller finally found stability in Weimar and became a professor of history and philosophy in Jena. During this period, he primarily focused on writing historical works. Despite the challenges and setbacks he faced, Schiller's early life and career exemplify his resilience and determination to pursue his artistic passions. Friedrich Schiller, the renowned German playwright and philosopher, left a lasting legacy that continues to be celebrated today. His profound insights and contributions to literature and philosophy have earned him numerous honors and accolades, solidifying his place in history. One of his famous quotes, My life will recur in exactly identical fashion, captures the essence of his enduring impact. Schiller's influence is evident in the way he is commemorated around the world. In Stuttgart, Germany, a statue was erected in his memory on a square that was renamed Schillerplatz. Berlin's Gendarmenmarkt also boasts a Schiller monument that was unveiled in 1871, a testament to his enduring importance. Even across the Atlantic, Schiller's impact is felt. The German-American community in New York City donated a bronze sculpture of him to Central Park in 1859, making it the first installed sculpture in the park. In Detroit, Michigan, a statue of Schiller stands proudly on Belle Isle, a symbol of the city's appreciation for his contributions. Schiller's influence extends beyond physical monuments. 
1964, his image graced the German Democratic Republic 10 mark banknotes, a testament to his enduring significance in German culture. Additionally, in 2019, Google honored Schiller on his 260th birthday with a Google Doodle, further showcasing his lasting impact. These honors and commemorations serve as a reminder of Schiller's profound philosophy and literary achievements. They inspire us to engage with his works and delve into his profound insights on human nature, morality, and the pursuit of truth. Schiller's philosophy encourages us to reflect on the cyclical nature of life and the potential for personal growth and transformation. In our daily lives, Schiller's legacy reminds us of the importance of art, literature, and philosophy in shaping our understanding of the world. It encourages us to seek knowledge, question societal norms, and embrace our individuality. Schiller's wisdom continues to resonate, providing us with guidance and inspiration as we navigate the complexities of modern life. Friedrich Schiller, the renowned German philosopher and playwright, is often speculated to have been a Freemason, although concrete evidence of his membership is yet to be found. In 1787, Schiller wrote a letter mentioning his involvement with Freemasonry, specifically referring to the initiation ceremony at the Lodge Gunther Zooms to Hinden Lohen. However, no official membership document has been discovered to substantiate these claims. Despite the lack of definitive proof, Schiller's connections to Freemasonry are evident through various relationships and works. In 1784, he was appointed to the prestigious position of Chair of History and Philosophy at the University of Jena, thanks to the recommendation of his fellow Freemason, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. This appointment further suggests Schiller's affiliation with the fraternity. One notable example of Schiller's Masonic influence is his poem, Ode to Joy, which was later incorporated into Ludwig van Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. This collaboration between Schiller and Beethoven demonstrates the shared values and ideals between Freemasonry and their respective artistic endeavors. Schiller's connection to Freemasonry is also reflected in his literary works. His play, William Tell, and the ballad, The Hostage, both contain elements of Masonic ideas and symbolism, showcasing his familiarity with the fraternity's principles. Additionally, Schiller maintained close friendships with prominent Freemasons such as Carl Leonard Reinhold and Christian Gottfried Korner, further suggesting his involvement in the Masonic community. While the question of Schiller's Freemasonry remains somewhat elusive, his legacy as a philosopher and playwright continues to inspire and provoke thought. His exploration of themes related to freedom, morality, and the pursuit of truth resonates with individuals seeking meaning and purpose in their daily lives. Whether or not Schiller was a Freemason, his works serve as a testament to the enduring impact of Masonic ideals and their potential to shape our understanding of the world. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.